All right, okay. we're good to go. Great. Uh, this is the Park Commission meeting for July 13th. Uh, current time is, looks like it's about 11.34. And I am in process of pulling up our agenda. But um, let me see. So calling the meeting to order, we'll stall off, start off with roll call as it appears on my screen. Uh, Phil McDuffie is present. David Raymond. Present. Don Hudson. Present. Chad Smith. Present. Nicole Marisi. Present. Lori Mills. Present. And Mary Elizabeth Pofer is present. I'll also let you know, uh, we have Amber uh, in here as well. We're having some com computer issues. So City Administrator Amber Lewis is here. And we also have Vicki Ballard uh, from Public Works. Great. Good to know. OK. And I have just been able to pull up while well, I'm in process of pulling up an agenda so I can look at two different screens at the same time. But um, golly, things are really going slow. Uh, so I'm having to flip back and forth again. All right, let's see. So we'll start off with public comments. Um, citizens wishing to address the Park Commission for items not on the agenda will be received at this time. Please limit your comments to three minutes. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, the Park Commission is restricted from discussing or taking action on items not listed on the agenda. Citizens to wish to address the Park Commission with regard to matters on the agenda will be received at the time that that item is considered. Um, so at this time we will take any public comments? Uh, Ashley, you can run down how people can do that if you'd be so kind. Sure, at the bottom of your screen, depending on uh, what kind of device you're using is the option to raise your hand. Um, it may also be near the participants option in the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in, I don't believe we have anybody right now, um, but star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute. Great. So I am looking, I'm not seeing any hands raised at this time. We'll give it a couple more minutes. Mary Elizabeth, was, did you have a? I, I have a quick okay. question. Um, sure. I wanted to bring up something about invasive species and it's not on the agenda. Is this the time to bring it up? Yeah. Okay, just real quick, uh, Brian Ryder helped me realize what was going on. There's some, in, uh, I hope Vicki's on this call. I think you said, they said she is. There's some invasive species that's really thorny. It's a, it's a small bushy looking plant. It's maybe 12 to 18 inches tall and it's just got some deep roots and it's over near the butterfly garden in that area. There's only one or two that's in the butterfly garden but they're all in the grass there and it is spreading fast and I cannot dig them out. I, 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 if, if somebody else can take a look at these, it sure is spreading back there. And Brian Ryder pointed it out to me and said he would do it, but he was leaving town. But Vicki, if you guys can take a look at this, it's, it sure is spreading. Yeah. Mary Elizabeth, there's actually a bush. Uh, I think of that same species that's probably three to four feet high. And I'm not sure if this is a species that puts out root shoots and, and is spreading in that way. But I, I am aware, I think, of the plant that you're talking about. So when you're facing the blood, butterfly garden, uh, if you're facing the front of that new one that we put in at the back uh, over there near the parking lot and near fields three, four, and five, um, it would be over on the far right side yes, of that it. garden. Yes. Okay. So yeah, that would be great. Uh, I wasn't real. I didn't realize it was spreading so much. I did go and cut 
uh, one out of the butterfly garden, but I didn't try to get down to the root uh, of it. But I, I just kind of chopped one off up yeah. top. But yeah, they're nasty. They're very nasty. Yeah, the roots are really deep. I can't get it myself. Yeah. <laughs> Jack was aware of it and it is a quick growing um, and quick spreading. So they're, they're working on trying to, to manage it and we'll cut it down as much as we can and we'll see what else we can do. Okay. Yeah. I, I have a tool, by the way, um, that I use to extract roots, uh, suckers like, I don't know, up to maybe an inch in diameter. It kind of works like a claw hammer. You It just yep. grabs the grabs the little whatever trunk it can get a hold of and then you pull it back and it just levers them out of the ground. I've pulled a hundred plus of them out of my backyard. So if um, somebody gets after that, uh, I'd be happy to loan them this tool. It's really, it, if, if it can, it'll pull them out by the root. Sometimes the roots break off, but it gets either the whole root or most of the root. Right. I, I know bigger than an inch is, I don't know if it'll work. So yeah, I know that uh, they actually loan those out on It's My Park Day if you want it. And so I know what you're talking about. If we do not have that tool, that would be a great, uh, that's, I would consider that a very basic tool that we need in our arsenal for the city. I don't know how much they cost, but I can imagine they cost more than, you know, at the upper end, maybe $150 or something like that's, that. That's what mine cost. Yeah. So um if vicky can look to see if we have that uh it's kind of a whole plant puller uh, yeah if she wants to uh if she wants to get after those uh ask her to call me or text me or something and i'll, I'll meet her up there with that puller yeah so. that and that would be in alignment i know we we have we're very restricted as to what kind of uh herbicides and that type of thing we can use because of both being on the park and over a recharge zone. But obviously when you're just yanking something out by the root, that's uh, that's a good way to go if it's effective. So thank you, Don. You bet. All right. Uh, you can lower your hand. We're all bad about not lowering and raising our hands. That way when you do raise your hand, I'll know you've raised your hand. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Are there any more public comments? Going once, going twice. Seeing none, we're moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, all consent items listed are considered to be retuned by the Park Commission and may be enacted by one motion. Uh, there is no separate discussion of consent agenda uh, items unless the board members has requested that the item be discussed, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on regular agenda. Okay, so the first agenda item that we have is discussion and possible action on the minutes from June 1st, 2021 of the Park Commission meeting. Does anyone have any comments? regarding the uh, the minutes from June 1st. I make a motion to approve the minutes from June 1st. Okay. Hearing no discussion, there has been a motion made by Nicole Marisi to approve the minutes. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Lori Mills, beach to the punch, got a second in. Um, so, uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes as written, either wave, say aye. We don't need to aye. aye. I, I'm an aye. So the motion passes unanimously. Any opposed? Hearing none. So that is unanimous. Next agenda item discussion and possible action to recommend a capital improvement project for a dog park and walking trail relocation to be constructed as proposed in the master park plan dated April, 2019 to request funding from RCDC, as well as exploring other grant opportunities to fund and recommend the city administrator to draft an 
RFP for this capital improvement project. That's a mouthful. Yes, it is. So is it your <laughs> mouthful? Yes, sir. That okay. would be our mouthful. Yeah. You know, we have three of us, so we kind of had to have a lot of ver a lot of uh, a lot of words in here just to understand kind of the scope of what we're trying to discuss today. And uh, hopefully, y'all have been able to take a chance to to look at the attachments here to understand better the scope of what this is about. Would anyone like to start discussion? Yeah, I'm going to have to tell you right now, you're going to have a hard sell getting me interested in this in the least. I'm, I'm highly offended that this is even on the agenda, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I, I can come at this from so many different directions, from everything from trying to fit it into the budget to taking away parking to the fact that you're trying to shove the dogs into that little space. I mean, I, I come at this from so many different directions and I am just amazed this is on our agenda. I don't even know where, how somebody tries to throw a ball to their dog in that small space. I don't well, know. Awesome. You understand how big that space is? I, you know what? I spend a lot of time at that park. I spend a lot of time in that space. I am there five days a week. Yes, I know how big that space is. We also have uh, a third of an acre. Order. This isn't only um, your issue. It's the issue of all, of all the residents of Rollingwood. And some people are, are have mentioned before when we did the master plan that it is a, an item of interest that they're of positive interest. So it's not just your, your opinion on this. It's, it's yes. not any one person's opinion at all. Uh, I will say that being president, which you were not, David, I don't, don't believe you weren't a member of the community at the time that the park master plan was drafted. I was prior to that. Um, I will say that I think that the publication that there was going to be a meeting discussing the park and trying to get neighborhood concerns for the park master plan was not well publicized. Uh, nor put out. So I, I don't think that we have a wide representation of the current constituency of the neighborhood. I think the last strike force that did, uh, the strike force survey that did address this issue came back that most people in the neighborhood, it was a thin, it was a thin majority, but it seemed to be a majority, wanted to keep the park as it is con currently configured and wasn't interested in creating a dedicated separate dog park that we would need to build and maintain. I think, um, but, I think that misrepresents well, a little bit there, Phil. It is, it was pretty much a 50-50 line. So the, um, I said it was a narrow majority, but it was a majority. Yeah, it was a narrow majority. So, it, but it still warrants the um, exploration. Sure. And there are health and safety issues as well. I know that, they're, you know, having, we've gone, we've talked about this in prior meetings, the issue of having feces and things like that on fields where kids play, the right. deeded fields the way they are. And, you know, quite honestly, the dog park has had several incidents of aggressive dogs. And that is a big concern and should be a concern to all of us. There have not been several instances of aggressive dogs. I would, I, I would, I would, I would say that's an untruth for the I most part. That 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 my own dog was attacked there. I know Vicki has been bit. Um, I, I would say there are several instances of aggressive dogs. Well, for the people that go out there simply, I would say that most of the time, nothing is occurring. And for the most part, most people who do attend comment on how much they appreciate this park because of the fact that how well the dogs do get along and how they don't like going to some other places such yeah, as I walked, so. my, I walked up with my son and a couple of his seven-year-old friends one time and there was an aggressive dog and dog owner screaming at each other that the dog was aggressive to the other owner's dog and then he was just walking off like well you just have to deal with it i've witnessed it i took a video of it because it was alarming to me i'm up there with my seven-year-old son and a couple of his friends 
who were trying to throw the football around and this happened and it was very startling to me. Well, given the fact that fields one and two are completely dedicated, throwing the football around on one and two would alleviate having to deal with that at all. But anyway. We're not saying it's the, the majority or anything like that or that it's happening every day, but it is happening and we have to acknowledge that. And as city representatives, we need to make sure that this is a safe place for everybody and having kids and dogs on the fields is not safe okay. for health uh, reasons and for other reasons. We're, I mean, we're trying to do something that is good for the community and not trying to take away but give a dedicated space. And I think sometimes that gets lost in the messaging and it feels like something is being taken away, but actually you're, the, the dog park will get its own dedicated space. I mean, I think there's, it's just a matter of how you look at it. It might be, but it very much is taking something away. So um, I do it's see- not taking Elizabeth. it away. You would still have a dog space and it would be dedicated and you wouldn't have to get off the fields when it's used for children and you wouldn't have to fight for the space or those types of things. It would be there whenever you needed it. It's taking away the use and recreation of a much larger, much more appropriate area. There are also <laughs> going to be safety concerns with taking away much needed parking in the park and especially the ability to bring an EMS truck to that back area should a medical emergency uh, occur. It's also going to be a little bit onerous on the McMahons over on Pleasant Cove. But I do see we've got Mary Elizabeth and Don having their hands raised. If you guys want to talk, uh, Mary Elizabeth, you have something that you would like to say? also see a, a citizen, Diana, with her hand. Mary Elizabeth is mute, muted. You're muted, Mary Elizabeth. She's still muted. You're muted. Um, now you're muted. Actually, Don, was, Don had his hand up first. Don, please, okay. you go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, I'm opposed. It's a very small area. The problems with uh, aggressive dogs will only be exacerbated by putting them in a smaller area. And I, I have never seen, I mean, the most aggressive dog I used to see was uh, KK, who weighed about 10 pounds. And <laughs> all he did was bark. And um, I just, anything that reduces citizens' access to the use of the the park I'm generally going to be opposed to. Um, if, if fields three, four, and five were made quite a bit smaller and uh, a big chunk of that was given, committed to a dog park where the, the area wasn't so small, I, that, that would be something that could be considered. Uh, I doubt that would gain any traction. But um, also the price of this thing, uh, Seems like it was around one hundred seventy-five thousand. That's that's a deal killer right there. Um, so I'm opposed. Okay, Mary Elizabeth. Uh, oh, let's hear from the public, Diana. If you can, if you want to speak, please speak now. All right, I'm Diana Wallace. I'm a third generation Rolling Woodian, and I love our community. I love the way it is, but as many years as I've lived here, and I hate to admit it, it's over 70, I have met more wow. people in our community at the mixed use fields than I have in the entire 70 years that I've lived here. We have been friends, we have been neighbors, we have worked together, we have been together, we look after each other. If somebody has a poop and somebody else is distracted, we go pick up the poop. We point it out. Yes, it's a field with dogs on it. Yes, there will be dog poop. Heaven knows that it's considerably more uh, well cared for than Zilker Park and kids and poop. And it's a tremendous asset 
tremendous asset to our community. To make it smaller is to increase the tension. We've seen that in human beings. You crowd them together and you get more fights. You get more arguments. I have been going to that dog park, excuse me, the mixed use field for well over five to six years. In that entire time, the entire time, I go twice a day for approximately two hours a day, seven days a week, I have seen three dog fights. And two of them were started by little dogs trying to be alpha dogs to show the big dogs that, hey, we're the really big guys. So yes, incidents do occur. Yes, things do happen. But we have created the safest, calmest, quietest, the whole idea that it was the fault of the dogs, that the fields were overused and that we were the ones that did it was easily erased when they started watering the fields. When the rain started coming down, go have a look. If you want to make an argument, it was the kids that did the overuse of the field because the moment the dogs took over the field, it became incredibly green and beautiful. So you are destroying an established community while you're in the same word saying, but we want to have people come together. We want people to be together, to mix. We have people that met brand new neighbors. Their dog park was the place where they met other people in Rolling Wood. There is absolutely no other place in Rolling Wood that is even marginally comparable, not even marginally. So to do away with this, and especially to try and get money for it when we have disasters turning every which way we turn, we just had a recent boil, waters, boil water notice under veil. This is where the money should go. This is where the expense should go. This is safety. This is safety. Thank you very much. Donna. Um, Mary Elizabeth. Well, I want to speak first to the cost, what we're talking about spending on this. We're struggling to maintain the park itself. If we're if we have, if we can raise the funds to pay for this, I suggest we start by maintaining our park. If you look at the park itself, it really needs some care. And the people that are working on this now, Diane, I mean, Vicki and this group, they're really working hard, but they've dealt with some natural disasters this year that have been pretty overwhelming. I don't think we can ask any more of them, but you know what? It's gonna take a lot. And so if we could get do some more up there, it would make a big difference. And if we put some of that money up there, that would help. And the fact that we are just regarding everything about the McMahons and their property rights, that is amazing to me that we're gonna shove this dog park even closer to them. The, the sound, everything, just shove this closer to them. That's amazing to me. And if we have a smaller dog park, then we're gonna have more dogs that are being out on the streets that are walking more and through the neighborhoods because people aren't gonna, a, a smaller dog park is not going to work. And it is a smaller area. Who was it that said to me, do you know how big this is? I, I mean, I'm amazed that you would say that this is a smaller dog park and just think it isn't. And how many, dog, how many parking places are we gonna be losing? Has anybody counted how many parking places we're losing by putting the dog park there? And wasn't parking on our agenda? At, how, many, how many meetings has parking been on our agenda? And how many parking places are we going to move? Why is parking always on our agenda and yet we're willing to give up more parking places for this? It boggles my mind. We're either going to lose parking places for this or we're going to lose parking places for milk and cookies, and yet we put parking on our agenda. Which is it, folks? I, I, parks are for the, never mind. That's all I've got to say. Okay. Thank you. Nicole, you've got your hand raised. Like yes, to hear from sir. You. 
Uh, thank you, everybody. Again, it's important to have a collaborative discussion and uh, facts being able to be processed here. Uh, with regard to McMahon's, I believe their house is for sale and not saying that that's one or the other, but uh, people buy houses knowing where they live and what is surrounding them. So that's a decision that people make coming into whichever home that they choose to buy. But you said it anyway, you know, it's, you're not saying it, but you are saying it. That boggles my mind that you would do that. What am I saying? I'm so sorry. You're saying that their house is for sale. You're not saying it, but their house is for sale. They still have property rights as long as they're there and the future property owners have rights. So let's still consider their property rights. For sure. And if I move next to a busy street, that is a decision that I make that I'm going to have your traffic. If you move next to a park, you're moving next to something that there's going to be park activity. So again, I, I, that's neither here nor there. Oh but God. you can up the McMahon rights. Again, just putting it out here to say, this is a decision that they made to live next to a park. If I make a decision to live next to a busy street, that's my decision. Moving on, okay. This is not about taking away anything. This is still about building community. Diana, thank you for your comments and, and your perspective of living in the neighborhood for as long as you have, for as many years as you have. And there will be community still being built regardless of where you have your dog. And this will also be a community to build friendships in this area. Okay. I would like to say one thing in regards to, I understand if you purchase a property next to a park, uh, you're taking that on. But uh, I do think there is a reasonable expectation that radical changes aren't going to be made. So the McMahons know they're next to the park. They also know there's a large wooded area that is a buffer between most of what occurs on the park and their property. And I do think there is a reasonable expectation that whatever is there currently would be more or less maintained rather than having radical changes, much in the same way that I think that Alec and the people living across from the proposed milk and cookies establishment uh, had an expectation of the park remaining more or less the way it is right now. So I do think that's something that should be considered in that discussion. But I, I do understand that whatever you buy a property near takes on issues. So thanks. Yeah, I love that you guys are defending the McMahons and I wish they were on this call so that we don't have to put words in their mouths for them. So. Well, they've written and, and expressed concerns. So we're, I, I think what we're doing is defending their rights. I don't think we're putting words in their mouth. I'm, I'm trying to express I wish too that they were on this call, but people have been uh, somewhat exhausted by the, the number of meetings about some of these things. So well, everybody can attend every meeting. I think Phil, you had mentioned that there's not enough meetings about the master park plan and the dog park fruition and all of the, but yet at the same time, you just said that there's so many meetings about this issue. So again, there's a variety of issues in the neighborhood. What I'm referring to is a variety of issues, such as milk and cookies, the strike force, all that type of thing. There, I was expressing that there are so many meetings and so many different commissions that discuss these various aspects that people tend to get somewhat exhausted and don't want to attend every single meeting to defend keeping their neighborhood more or less the way it currently is. That's what I'm expressing. Well, and prior to five or six years ago, there were not dogs on this field. And then somehow it has been misconstrued and that the original deed and the intent of the fields. No, dogs were allowed on fields one, two, three, four, and five prior to this. And there was a, there was a, uh, a concession to not have dogs on fields one and two at all and to solely keep them on fields three, four, and five. That was a concession made by the people who used to take their dogs out on fields one and two. But prior to this, dogs were allowed on all the fields. 
I would probably just need clarification on the when the ordinance was allowed to have dogs on it. It was my understanding that dogs were not allowed on the fields. And then it wasn't until recently that they were allowed permission on three, four, and five. Okay. So again, well, I, Nicole, I, I remember it the same way you do. I thought dogs previously were allowed only on one and two and not on three, four, and five. And then we changed up the gates so that they would be allowed on three, four, and five and no longer on one and two. I thought that was the concession. Um, I can weigh in on the history of it, just, just for historical perspective. Um, there were people who would use the, the, the fields for off-leash dogs, but it was not allowed. And there was a council member who um, had a confrontation or maybe an issue with uh, the Little League at one point in 2015. And so they took it to the city council to discuss allowing dogs on the fields as long as there were no organized activities and as long as they had reasonable control over their dog and the dogs did not interfere with the use of anyone else using the fields. So that ordinance was added in 2015. And then um, there was some damage done to fields one and two. Uh, the little leagues had spent about $8,000 getting the new special dirt that they have to use to keep the fields playable uh, when it rains. There, it's a water wicking sort of dirt that they use and it had rained quite a bit and the dogs were on the fields and um, basically there was a lot of damage done and they had just paid in a larger amount of money for it. So I was at the park commission at that time. And so the city council chose to then still allow the dogs only on three, four and five, but not on one and two, because the investments that the little league were making and the care of those fields were, were much greater where the little league fields on three, four and five didn't have that issue. So that's just the history that I know of. That sounds right. Thank you for that. And I think it, I don't know, somebody had mentioned something about, maybe it was you, Mary Elizabeth, as far as trying to do more maintenance and get the fields up and running. And we've also been in contact with uh, Melissa Morrow. She's, I believe, a resident as well as she's responsible CEO of WEA. And just trying to gauge how we can improve and maintain what we currently have. And based on what their schedule is, we're trying to collaborate with them to see how we can incorporate and adopt some of that into our own MO. Uh, part of our suggestion is you have to actually close the fields for almost three months out of the year in order for them to rejuvenate, for the seed to take place, for it to be watered appropriately, and for you know the foot traffic to stay off of it. And so if that was a maintenance schedule that we adopted as a city, that would mean potentially that the fields are closed for three months. And this park, this dedicated area, would allow the dogs someplace to go when that happens, if that becomes part of our routine MO, as well as when we've just had this conversation with I-9 a couple of months ago about using the fields four weeks out of the summer from nine till noon, there was a lot of contentious debate over should they be allowed all those fields or not? And again, we're looking at the continued use of what these fields could potentially bring for us from a revenue perspective uh, if we're able to continually get more organizations to come in and rent them and then have a place that's dedicated for dogs to be able to be off leash with us being able to be able to raise money for the city. Actually, I was concerned not so much about the fields, but about the park itself, the trails. There's a lot of people that use things besides the fields, that they use the trails and the trails themselves, the, the walkways, the, the, uh, the gardens there. Those are the areas the trail has a lot of weeds growing in it and along it. That's what I was referring to, not the, not the uh, fields themselves. And as far as the fields being closed for a short time, four weeks, you know what? The, the dog owners can find some other place to go during that time. I still would prefer that the, them be lose the field for four weeks than them be shoved into a smaller space. But thank you for being thoughtful about that. I would also like to say that I appreciate it, but uh, when we're looking at the I-9, honestly, today, I don't think they use the fields three, four, and five at all. And several times, they've only had a couple of children out there. They're, they've had to really spread out on one, two, three, four, and five. I, I absolutely think that they should be granted rights to three, four, and five. 
if they had the numbers to support that. Uh, and I don't know that they do. Plus the fact right now it, they're renting three, four, and five at a rate that is the same as the renting one and two, which is $25 an hour. So when we're talking about raising revenue, it's not a lot of money for a very large space. But um, anyway, well, I would just like to have that clear. I also had dialogue with uh, Justin Cannon, who is the I-9. He runs, he runs that night. And I asked him, I said, could you project out for us? And we're not holding it, holding you to it. But if you were able to have access to our fields throughout the year, what would you look to have from us? And I believe I included it in this packet. Uh, he had put a proposal together that he would like to rent our fields 144 to 160 hours per year. And at his current $25 per hour, that's over $3,500. So part of what we're saying is we have a difficult time raising funds in order to be able to pay for the maintenance and operations of our existing parks. But yet at the same time, by, by proposing this separated area, we'd have a much easier time being able to rent out our fields to youth organized sports groups so that they would be able to come in and access. And then we still have a space for the off-leash area for the dogs to be able to be using. And so again, it, it's, it's, it is change and it's hard change. There's sometimes resistance to change. Yet at the same time, there's a lot of benefits that come out of something like this. And I think that it's, it's a real great opportunity for us to continue to just try to support each other collaborate and to be able to come to a cohesive and a, and a solution that works for the, for the majority of the residents and most importantly for the children because this is dedicated to organized youth sports. And right now we have this battle and in in, in sort of a fight over when the children are be able to use it and when, the, when they're not supposed to be able to use it, but they should have rights to be able to use it whenever they choose and whenever it's an organized area. If you'll check the leash, you'll discover that it says priority usage, not exclusive usage. And that was changed. Well, and also I, I would say that we, we, there isn't a fight. We have given priority and we have, we vacate the fields and, and allow the use for the children. But there has, the, the parks are an amenity and are owned by the city of Rollingwood and the citizens of the city of Rollingwood. And there has been a lot of concern raised by certain citizens that we are giving priority to tenants over our own citizenry and the use of our park. We don't want to rent out our park 100 percent of the time um, and not have it be available for the usage and enjoyment of our citizens as a whole. Um, we don't have a problem. And quite frankly, when it comes to to collecting funds and things like that, people, some people feel that the park has been so much under attack from their usage that what they don't want to do is provide funds to help fund an action that will be taking away more of their use and enjoyment of the park. That's why we haven't been effective on doing fundraising and uh, collecting monies. But in my opinion, that's my opinion. Well, I've got a slight opinion and I'll add two things, which is simply that uh, I come from a family of first responders and that would be a nightmare to try and get back and rescue anybody. So if you're talking about children and safety, you've got major problems coming your way. I'd like to make a motion that we table this and we put this to a vote or get citizen input on this. Are you asking us to table it or are you asking us to take a vote? I'm No, I want to get citizen input. I do not want to take a vote on this. I want to table this and get citizen input. Well, we've had citizen input because the master park plan that came into fruition. No, I'm not talking about the master plan. I don't think we had enough. I think not enough people responded to that in the community. I myself wasn't okay. involved in that. I want, so in, I want specific, I want to finish what I'm saying is what I want. It, it was responded to. I, I you know what, I, you didn't live here, as the you live here then? I want to finish what I'm saying if you don't mind. My hand's up. I would like to get citizen input on this specific thing. Have we gotten citizen input specifically on this subject? 
closing that park for an off-leash area and moving the dog park to that parking lot. Have we gotten citizen input specifically on this? Yes. yes you know. The park study was presented to city council and shared with public on an open at an open house. Two public engagement sessions were implemented, including a morning session and an evening session. A dedicated Wait, presentation oh, and discussion. When was this? Upper field. This You're was. She's cutting out. I can't hear her. Sorry for my internet connection. I apologize. So this was prior. This was prior to in August of 2018. So then the master park plan was adopted in April of 2019. And okay. I want something more recent than that, specifically on this. So I make a motion to. Oh, well, let's let's address my motion first. There was a motion on the table. Did we have a second? Motion to table. Oh, Don's the second. Are you talking the motion to table? Could you restate your motion, Mary Elizabeth? I want to table this and get citizen input. Okay. Motion by Mary Elizabeth. We have a second. Second. Second by Don. Uh, I believe this warrants a. Uh, uh, where we go to each person and get their vote. Um, so I will go in the order of the commission. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Kofer. Aye. David Raymond. Nay. Don Hudson. Aye. Chad Smith. Nay. Uh, and people are bouncing around on my screen, so I'm having Difficulty. Uh, Nicole Marisi. Nay. Uh, Lori Mills. Lori. Sorry, Lori I didn't realize I was on mute. Nay. And Phil McDuffie is yay. So we have four nays, three yays. Motion fails. So that does that mean we continue to discuss this since it was yes. a motion to table? Right. Yeah, I just I I thought we were interrupting each other, so I apologize, uh, Mary, if I need to take my time. Um, what, you you mind if I make a comment, Bill? Go for it. Um, I think it was um, properly addressed um, in the um, nine months of uh, comprehensive uh, strike force uh, survey that we put together. The question was directly asked about um, the dog parks, so I think it's inaccurate to uh, kind of a waste of time to um, get. Um, I, I'm happy to have anyone call in and talk about this, but um, any further um, study and research on uh, what people's opinions are about the dog park um, issue is uh, not warranted. Okay, I will say that looking at what was uh, collected during the strike force. And there were some people that I know answered the question incorrectly because they didn't understand the question. So there are some concerns there that there might have been, it might have been clearer had it been stated that creating the new dog park would be removing usage of the current mixed use area. Um, and some people were unclear about that. But even with that, there was a narrow majority of people who wanted to keep the, the uh, park the way it was and not create a separate dog park. But um, anyway, uh, I can appreciate that there's been a lot of work done by the strike force and, and trying to put together a survey that uh, got the results. So um. Bill, would you mind if I weighed in kind of on Go the comments? Um, okay, um, so um, there have been some comments made about um, the master plan process. And I, I actually was serving on the park commission when we started the master planning process. It, we started it in 2015 at the very end of the year. Um, in 2016, we drafted a preliminary master plan outline. And at that time, the park commission held six uh, specially called uh, park master plan meetings between March and November 
of 2017 to solicit feedback from the public. And then we also distributed a survey for residents. Um, and then in 2017, we did all of our in-house work that we could do because this wasn't our job, we're not experts in it. And so the city council voted to, relief, uh, to release an RFP to hire a firm to finalize the master plan. So in August, 2017, Nudge Design was hired to complete the master plan. And then in, in 2018, there was a, another community survey that went out because we received feedback from the community. Like usually what happens in Rollingwood, whenever you send a survey, there's always gonna be people who feel like things weren't worded correctly or whatever. Um, so we drafted another community survey with a lot of citizen feedback. And then we actually uh, had additional public outreach um, and then the, the survey was kept open the whole time. In an effort to be inclusive, it was posted on the city website. It was shared in the citizens' water bills. It was advertised in the Picune, in the Community Impact, in the Austin American Statesman. It was posted on Nextdoor, and it was emailed to stakeholders around the park and pertinent organizations like the Women's Club. And it was available in print at City Hall. And then the tr when we had the draft park study, it was presented to the uh, city council at an open house. We actually had an open house for specifically for the park master plan. And it had two public engagement sessions. One was held in the morning and one was held in the evening so that we would be able to catch people who were available during the day and people who were available during the evening. Um, there was a dedicated presentation and study of the up, upper fields during that time. And the draft master plan was also presented to RCDC twice. The final master plan project was discussed at the Park Commission in September, uh, I mean, in July of 2018. And then it was discussed again in August of 2018 when the city council adopted it. So I, I just wanted to defend that process as it was inclusive. It was very well advertised and it was a community collaboration. And I'm sorry if there, you know, it's hard to, to, to follow every single issue in the city. I understand that. And if people, you know, wish that they had been more engaged at the time, I understand that, but that doesn't negate the work that was done by our community at that time. So I just want, I want to kind of set the record straight on that. Thank you. I appreciate all that history. Um, and does anybody I, know any history as far as, I know we've had a couple questions come up about EMS and responders, as far as what would happen there with regard to a situation if a you know, service was required. Uh, do we have any kind of uh, communications from our fire chief or do we know, is that something we need to look more into? I, I would think it would be very prudent to look into that with any EMS responders that may be available to see if, if there is an alternative to addressing a, a medical emergency on that back area. Uh, I, would assume I know that it's mentioned by plan. several of our police. Uh, when I've been out there and talked to some of the police, uh, our, our policemen, they've expressed a, a big concern about that. Um, but yeah, I think it would be prudent to, to have that I would assume on the on the opposite side, though, I would assume that with the research that went into the master park plan, that that would have probably been a consideration or a talking point. And it I would, would not, not, I would not make we would not have gotten to its state of discovery and implementation if indeed that was an issue. So again, I'm, I'm leaning that those eyes were doubted and those T's were crossed as the master park plan was being developed. I could weigh I in would. on that too. Um, so for a fenced area outside, this came from our fire chief, uh, Michael Lacey. For the fenced area outside, it's considered an outdoor assembly standing space. And they use the 2015 International Fire Code, table 1004.1.2, that gives a net factor of five. You take the square footage of the fenced area that someone can stand in and you divide it by five and it gives the worst case scenario of how many people can fit in if you're looking at capacity. And then you have to, then that's where they find out where there have to be egress points. So they, the calculated number between one and 500, then the number of exits would be two. 
So then they show how you would space the area and how you would separate the area from secondary exits. And so there wasn't a concern about the location not being accessible, but uh, it, there, there need to be two exits was what the fire chief weighed in on. Okay. I, I, I would feel comfortable having them look at it again, but I appreciate that, you know, obviously there are going to be uh, regulations and that type of thing. I, I don't know that the eyes were dotted. Also, I would say at least at the meetings that I attended at the time that the park commission was being done, it was presented by Nudge Design as these were options, these were not uh, mandates or anything of that nature. And that uh, that they were looking for funding from the city of Austin and that that was why some of the items were drafted is because they felt that they could easily get funding from Austin Parks and Rec um, was what I recall at that time. But um, anyway, it, it, it should be, anything that would be developed would need to be looked at uh, in depth and I think definitely safety issues would be something that would need to be reconsidered and relooked at very closely before anything were to be created. I'm sure that would be done uh, if, if we ever got to that stage. So, Well, I'm gonna make a motion that we actually move forward with this, that the motion would be to recommend the capital improvement project for dog park and walking trail relocation to be constructed and that we request funding from RCDC as attached in the file according to the cost analysis that came from Terrascapes and to request that city administrator draft an RFP for the capital improvement project to understand what our costs would be since this is a cost analysis and not a final cost. That's my motion. Okay. okay. Do I have a second? Motion by Nicole Marisi. Do I hear a second? Have I heard a second? I don't see one yet. Second. Second by David Raymond. So there's a motion by Nicole Marisi and a second by David Raymond. Once again, I think this warrants a, uh, a going person by person and getting the vote. So once again, I will look on my screen, do my best. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Kofer. Nay. Nay. David Raymond. Yay. Yay. Don Hudson. Nay. Nay. Lori Mills. Yay. Yay. Chad Smith. Yay. And let's see, is there anybody? And um, Nicole Marisi. Yay. And Phil McDuffie is a nay. So four yays, three nays. And I believe this passes. Can I ask something real quick? Sure. This doesn't have to be approved by city council? It would be. Ultimately, okay. this would go to the city council. OK. And it would have all to be we're doing is sending it to city council. Right. That's all we do. Yeah. yeah. We're not making any decisions here today. We're letting city council take it from here. Okay. Okay. Can I just add one comment here? Um, I, I realize it's been voted to go forward with this, but this feels, I mean, I, I don't see an issue with how that park area is being used. And if we're going to spend 175,000, which is what I recall the, the rough budget was, what, what problem are we actually trying to solve? And that's really all I got. It, it's uh, something about this doesn't make any sense to me. That's, that yeah. is well stated. <clears throat> all right, moving on to agenda item number four, then I believe We've addressed three, discussion and possible action determine if a subcommittee should work together and formulate a fundraising strategy. 
So that was submitted by myself. And I know off and on over the last several months, um, possibly a year that we've brought this up, tabled it, brought it back up, and we really hadn't had any initiatives to fundraise for the park. And this is something that now that we are discussing more of these things, uh, such as this, our recommendation to city council for the dog park, as well as the relocation of the walking trail, it makes sense, or even possibly adding shade structures or anything to, to really come together and strategize over fundraising opportunities for our park. And uh, I'd like to just bring this back up again. And if we agree as a park commission that we should form a subcommittee and dig deeper into some, some opportunities, then I'd be happy to partner with whomever would like to step that. Okay. Yeah, I, and I, I did, I, there's an, oh, I'm sorry, there's an attachment here. I don't know if you all had a chance to take a peek at it, but here are just some of the, like off the top of the cuff, things that I was thinking of uh, possibly. Hold on, sorry. Oops, I just clicked the wrong thing. Um, I would that. just to make a quick comment. I, I'm, I'm in agreement to that. I mean, it's it's part of our commission's um, uh, modus operandi to to, uh, to come up with um, fundraising fundraising solutions, and um, I don't see why not uh, to have a subcommittee that explores those opportunities. And I'm aware of some citizens that are also looking at ways in which to fundraise for our parks. And I think we should be collaborating with them so that it's um, the best foot forward and it's all cohesive and there aren't multiple asks and um, that it really is a joint effort between um, those outside the park commission and the park commission. I like that idea, the fact that you have, you know, that you're aware of, you know, other constituents in our area that are in our, in our city that are talking the same discussion and how we can come together. Again, this is not a city to be divided amongst these decisions that are being made, but it's a city to come together to say, how can we, whether we like it or don't, to, to work together, you know, that we are strong together and that we're not just independent of, we're acting independently of other folks within the city. And so, Lori, that's a huge asset that you bring to the commission is you know these you know other folks that are trying and speaking the same language that we are right now and david thanks for stepping up all right um any more discussion i do see hands raised and i'm just going to call on those and uh to see if there is anything to be spoken. Uh, just as a note to folks, once you're through talking and you don't want to be called on again, if you could possibly go to the lower screen and lower your hand, that might be helpful. Uh, Diana, do you have something you'd like to say? Not hearing anything, I'm assuming maybe you're not right in front of your screen or you're it doesn't look like you're yes. muted. Oh. Very simple. Uh, it would be my deepest prayer that everyone could come together. Appreciate that. If you can lower your hand, if you're done talking, that would be great. Um, Mary Elizabeth, you've got your hand raised as well. I think you guys, um, I think you guys can hopefully understand my predicament here, but I really don't want to raise money, the $175,000 to move the dog park. So how do I help with fundraising if I don't want to raise money for that? Can you help me there? I, I didn't take it as a suggestion that the money was to go directly to the dog park. I was, uh, I was under the impression there was the park in general. It's the same things that you were, you were looking to get fixed. It's the same things that we have in our, uh, I think it's called the exceptional items request. Is it the exceptional budget? Well, actually it's, I mean, my understanding would be it would be MNO and taking better care of what we have and as it is separate from the dog park. I think that is something that will be, um, 
could be RCDC money, could be, um, you know, something from other venues, but we've got to raise our own monies to do the things we want to do to just keep our park beautiful and the best asset that it is. The and things we've like, been talking about for the past two years, Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth, just, you know, taking better care of our park and having the tools to take care of those evasive species and, you know, just giving ourselves, putting ourselves in a better position to take better okay. care of this asset. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I appreciate sure. your input. Thanks. Okay. Don, you have your hand raised? Yeah. Um, I agree on the uh, concerns about uh, divisiveness. Um, for as long as I've followed this, which has been, I don't know, five, six years, the dog park has always been very divisive. And it seems like it's baseball against the citizens. Maybe that's a, a generalization that's unfair. Um, the, if, if those fields weren't used by children, there wouldn't, it wouldn't be an issue. Um, so that's one, one concern when we bring up an issue that is divisive, that one, there will be a winner and a loser. Uh, that's, um, unfortunate, but it, it feels that way. It feels very divisive. And the other thing is, you know, as we look at fundraising to repair trails and this type of thing, um, fundraising is time consuming and you never really hit a home run with it. Um, and yet we are, as a park commission, we're saying let's go forward with 175,000 to create this small dog park. To me, there's an imbalance there. And again, it's, it feels divisive. So that's, that's all I got. Okay. I think those are separate issues. And I hate for you to think about the park being baseball versus dogs because it's children and the deed and those kinds of things. No, We're not aware, trying but... to take, first of all, the fundraising is separate from the dog park. And third of all, I, I just feel like you can choose to, there's not a winner and a loser. There will still be if the city council chooses to move forward with the new area for dogs, no one is losing, but I, I don't wanna get back into this battle, but I do want you to think about this, not in terms of baseball versus, versus dogs and that you separate this dog park that we've been discussing with the fundraising, which is part of our initiative and we've been talking about for two years how best to do that. And now we have citizens starting some fundraising efforts and we want to marry those with what the park commission should be doing and what we know we need to do to keep up with our park. So we don't get in a situation where the grass isn't watered or the sprinklers don't work or we can't fix something that has eroded or needs repair. So I, I just think you, we, we need to switch the way that we're thinking about this. I, I, I hear you and I, uh, I, I think though that the, the rub is like I described it. It's people who would like to use that area, big acre or so to run their, their family member dogs and uh, that becomes unsuitable for children's baseball or softball. And so there's been a pretty steady, consistent effort <laughs> to move the dogs off of that area. First it was fields one and two, and then it was, now this is pushing them further. There was a thing a couple, three months ago to try to push the dogs down into the, the tract on Bee Cave Road. So uh, it's, it's uh, well, regardless of what you, how you look at the forces involved, it's divisive. And that's unfortunate. Can I, can I can I just Let's not go back into yeah. the dog park. I think we've closed that door and we've moved on to fundraising and we need to stay on the agenda. We've got 22 well, more I, minutes, so. I would like to hear from David Smith. He has his hand raised. He's joined the meeting. I had one quick question. It, oh, go ahead, Britt. Okay, go ahead. Just to help with clarity with Don's um, concerns. Um, I think uh, I was trying to support what Lori and Nicole were saying about that. I mean, we, we, we can't not address um, funding fundraising for the park in general. 
because there's an issue about the dog park. We do need, we do need to have some kind of a structure that um, where we do look look down avenues and ways where we can you know, fund what we need for the general park. And I think that's what we're trying to decide here on this uh, on this item, and not and not parlay that money into the dog park necessarily. We're trying to we're trying to say, do we need a subcommittee that is going to research avenues to bring money in for the park in general? That's 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 my impression of it, and that's what I support on. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Okay. But it's it's money that that comes out of rolling with taxpayer funds or rolling with families. But you know what, it's, I don't, I don't want to discuss it anymore. It's okay. kind of- Can we hear from David Smith, please? Yeah, David. Uh, and th thanks, thanks, Phil. And, and you know, I, I agree that the, the, the um, off-leash dog use uh, in the park has become kind of contentious and I have thoughts on that, but I don't want to go into it now because I want to echo, you know, really what, what Lori was saying. And as I think some of y'all know, I'm on RCDC. And I think the important thing to keep in mind, you know, particularly from, um, you know, a park funding standpoint, whether it's removal of invasive uh, species, which we really need to pay attention to, um, erosion control, everything else is um, from an RCDC standpoint, um, we are limited by Texas law and what we can pay for and what we can assist with. Um, our, RCDC can use RCDC um, funds to help fund capital improvements, um, but we're prohibited from um, supplying funds um, for uh, that are strictly for things that are traditional operation and maintenance. Um, and you know, I think what Laurie's saying is absolutely right. And you know, I, I know that there is um, you know uh, you know some controversy going on around off leash dog use. You know, my hope is that's going to be uh, getting towards being resolved. Um, but one of the things we need to be looking at is is ways if we want to um, continue to have a park that's nice and attractive and clean and safe. We need to be looking at ways, um, you know, to to fund that. Part of that can be done through donation um, and other things. Um, part of it also can can be done through um, uh, some sort of a, a user fee type situation. Um, you know, in particular, if we do ex expend the funds to create an off-leash dog area from a, both a human health, but also from a, a pet, pet safety standpoint, I think it makes sense to um, uh, look at operation maintenance for that, um, look at doing uh, requiring dog tags for uh, dogs and set up a fee structure for resident dogs and non-resident non dogs. Um, because, you know, one of the things, if I want to take my dog to off-leash dog area, I want to know that, you know, the other dogs are vaccinated, um, have had, you know, been checked for, you know, had annual checkups for worms, been vaccinated against uh, rabies, parvo, et cetera. And, and one of the ways to do that is require people to get tags at, at City Hall. Um, and show the, uh, the vaccination records, et cetera, but also, you know, allow a fee structure to help fund operation and maintenance um, for that area, which can be expensive. Um, you know, but also I, I agree with Laurie that we need to be thinking strategically about ways to raise fund, you know, primary for op operation maintenance of the whole thing. So um, I think to the extent that we can kind of, you know, uncouple the two, and y'all can focus on on the fundraising um, aspect. It'd be great because you know I go back to one of the things that RCDC is is responsible for is for funding capital improvements and capital improvement projects in a park are something that we're always going to uh, listen to and always entertain. But um, you know we've really had to be disciplined about making that bright line distinction between what is a capital improvement project. And what is an O and M project? So um, I hope those kind of help a little bit. Appreciate that. Thanks, David. If I would say a couple. Well, hold on. I I would say a couple of things. One is it, there can be cost and maintenance. Uh, I would wonder 
why this would be considered so much differently than the maintenance of the playground equipment or the other things that are also very capital intensive. Um, I would think that there may be some concerns by some citizens in the neighborhood that an amenity suddenly now there is this harsh division. Once again, when we're talking about bringing the neighborhood together and not being divisive, um, there, there may be some issues there. The other thing is I would like to say that I think as I've stated before, any fundraising that we do, when people can see what their monies are clearly earmarked for, that will go a long way to having people fundraise. People, uh, There are people with different needs or different desires of the park. So if people were able to know that their money is going to help pay for edging, for removal of invasive species, that type of thing, it would be a lot easier to, to get monies for those specific maintenance items. And if that's the whole premise behind making this motion for a subcommittee to do fundraising so that yeah. we can sell, we can present a story and an understanding to the residents of why it's important to raise money separately, that it's not collected from our tax dollars on our property tax bills, that it's not funded by our CDC. And yeah. so that's the whole point of this is now that we're really actively pursuing improving our park, we have that responsibility to be able to share the story with our residents of what is going on and why it's important for them to support us from a financial perspective. So in the interest so, of time, we still have two more items to go through. If there's not any more serious discussion on this, I would like to make a motion that um, a subcommittee should work together to formulate a fundraising strategy. I make a, I second it. Okay, we have a motion. Mary Elizabeth did have her hand up. I would have loved to have recognize her but she's taking her hand down so we have a motion by there you are Mills. able to have discussion after a motion in a second if okay you like to. okay great um so it's motion and a second do we have any more discussion about forming a subcommittee for fundraising seeing none i guess we're going toward a vote. All right, I think everybody said their piece. Uh, so there's a motion by Nicole Marisi, second by Lori Mills to form a subcommittee to investigate opportunities to do fundraising. And I'm assuming this would be open to anyone on the park commission who so wish to uh, participate. Right. Yes, and I believe and David was, was, up. Thank you. So, you know, I would, so could it, could the motion be made that these meetings just be open meetings and whoever wants from the park commission that wants to come and, and show up and that type of thing, or do we need to make, well, I guess because of, I don't. Open meetings act, you can only yeah, have. Open meetings act. And I'm happy to join since I'm kind of connected with the Friends of Rollingwood Park group. Okay. That would be awesome. I think that's appropriate. I'm willing to join as well, but if we do have an issue with too many people being on this type of a committee. So um, so anyway, so I, I don't know how we will determine who can come and who can't or what will happen. I'm assuming anything that comes from these meetings will be presented to the park commission as a whole is that correct yes okay so it, it's it's fine what whatever however this committee have, gets david and Lori, do we have a third member on that subcommittee or is it gonna stay that was me nicole okay great okay so it looks like it's david Lori, and, and nicole is going to form that subcommittee okay so we have a motion to form a subcommittee. Join. <laughs> we have a stack. What's that? I said whoever else can find some money for the park, they can join too. <laughs> well, we can't yeah. all attend. We that had to make sure that we'd give five thousand dollars. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I, I have a quick question. Yes, sir. What is the um, what is the estimate of M and O per year? Is it like eighty thousand? Is that what I have read? Is that the rough number? That seems about right. 
I have heard that number bandied about before, yes. Okay. And I, I'm not sure if that number includes the 30,000 that the uh, ish that the baseball and softball people uh, supply or not. I'm, I'm not sure if that includes their lease monies or not. I, I offhand, but I would like to know that. Okay. All right, so we have a motion it's about that hundred thousand. And, and what's that? It's Go about ahead. A, about a hundred thousand. It's about a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and so minus the thirty-ish that Western Hills gives. So we we're looking to fill a seventy thousand dollar hole. That's right. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. So. Thank you for that, Ashley. Um, so we have a motion and a second in, in the efforts for time as we would like to get through more agenda items than not. I'm going to uh, just ask for a verbal vote and raising of hands and that type of thing. So motion by Nicole, second by Lori. All those in favor, please indicate. Aye. 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 I'm an aye. Looks like that's unanimous. So the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, guys. Uh, item number five discussion and possible action on the 21 22 Park Commission budget and exceptional items. Yeah. So I had it. Um also submitted this. I think that this is in line with our normal timeline of when we request exceptional items from city council. <clears throat> uh, anything that would be up and beyond what uh, is normally in our budget and we don't really have a budget, but some things that we've noticed when we've done some park walkthroughs is that there's possibly gutters and downspouts repaired that we need repaired um, on the field house. And we don't have an estimate for that. So I don't know how we would request that from city council. But for example, on the previous walkthrough with Ray and Lori and Vicki, there at the lower pavilion on that sidewalk area um, that just comes off, I think it's probably the north side of the pavilion that Carrie was recommending that we install metal edging and maybe add some soil and water resistance plants in that area to help with the runoff that's taking place since gutters cannot be installed there. And in her estimation, she thought it would be about $1,500. Um, and so that would be something that we would consider adding on this for the exemplary items, um, as well as depending on what RCDC if city council approves moving forward with the dog park and the trail relocation, then there could potentially be um, an exemplary request for the relocation contingent contingency there. And so these were just, again, some items that I've noticed on our walkthroughs. I don't know if anybody else has come up with any other items that we would also want to add to this. So the motion would be, well, first of all, is there more discussion or questions about this? Um. Is the fascia board on there? That was the right there, the gutters downspouts and repair the rotted wood on the field house. So yeah. yes, so the fascia board was on there. And I don't know if your gutter guy gave you an estimate of what it would be if we matched the color to a you know simple bone. So that that's a number that we would love to add into this to request from city council. He did give me a number. Um or he may have just said to, to match the existing, it was gonna be double, but I'll reach back out to him. I'm sure okay. he can put together a quote for us, but so that facial board that. needs to be repaired. And once that happens, we would need to repaint. Correct. So that would be added in here as an- That's when we get rid of the item. brown. Yeah. Correct. Yes. And so I know you and I are working on paint sample colors. Um, and so that would be an example of how we would need this exemplary item request going to city council to put put into their budget for us to be able to make those repairs on the field house. Do we know when we have to submit that to city council by for their consideration? 
Um, they will be having those requests going to them at this next week's council meeting. I didn't receive any ex exceptional item requests from the park commission. Um, I had set the day, the deadline for the date that agenda items were due. I'm, we could probably still get these in there. We're taking them to them at their next, their meeting on Wednesday. Um, and then from there, they may be able to take them and decide if there's anything they just want to budget for in the actual budget that may not necessarily constitute, um, you know, a large kind of like one-time purchase exceptional item. Um, okay. And then as far I saw listed on there was that uh, for the proposal for the dog park, the way that timeline is going to fall by the time it gets through all the different hearings with city council, RCDC, it'll probably fall into next year's budget anyways. So we can always amend, um, you know, the budget later for something like that. Um, okay. So so you would, it goes to the RCDC. So you would not re recommend putting that on their request now since it's got such a long procedure to go through because we don't know if it can be done or not. Is that correct? Sure. It's just there's a the process to get it, you know, for RCDC funds. It's, I think, a, about a 60 day process after, you know, if it goes to council next and then to RCDC. So um, okay. I think it would make the most sense to not necessarily if you wanted to fill out an exceptional item sheet. I think um, it's a bit premature. It's just they would just need backup to kind of a company for how much money it is. And if there's an RFP that needs to be done still or there's more information that needs to be figured out, we may not have a number yet. Um, to place in the budget. So um, that one, we can always, if there's a request to RCDC, they can always go back and amend their budget. It seems okay. to be premature for that. I have a quick question. Uh, yes. So do we need to, uh, how do we get that fitness equipment uh, repaired? There's a piece that's missing and I had brought that up before, but I may not have done it correctly. I, I don't know. Uh, the piece of uh, fitness equipment that's furthest away from the upper playground. There's an actual piece missing. Do we have to pay for that? Will the city pay for that? How do we get that fixed, replaced? Do you have an estimated cost on what it would, would no. be? How, how would I get that? I, I don't know. Maybe. You're in the process. Of reach. These are You're just through walkthroughs that we've noticed. And so what we do is we say, okay, well, what, this is an area of concern. And then that's why Lori's going to get the quote from a gutter guy. So if you want to, maybe city has some co contact that would be able to give you information on what's missing and what the cost is to replay or replace or repair it. And then we can add it to this exceptional item. Or Can you get that, Ashley? We are in the process of talking to, I guess, the company that, you know, that put the equipment there. Since the, the repairs have been needed, there's been a storm or two and we've had to reschedule yeah. <laughs> trying to talk to them and, and get that information. Um, and I don't, that wouldn't really necessarily be considered an exceptional item, likely, you know, if it's just repair. Um, but we're working on getting that information and, and we'll make sure that, you know, we can fit that into a budget. So did that, did that piece just get stolen or do y'all have it at City Hall? Do you have any idea? We have it. It's here. Oh, you do. It just needs to be put... Well, if you get it out, I'll get I'll get somebody to put that on. Y'all, y'all just y'all just having trouble getting it put back on. There's... Go ahead, Ashley. Oh, Ashley, you're muted. Sorry, we we're all collaborating. Um, there's part of it needs to be repaired. It's not yes. it's unable to be put on in the state that it is in currently. So we're reaching out to try to get. A, a replacement piece or, or get it a technician to come and put it on. Oh, okay. Okay. We're in the process of it. We're working on okay. it. All right. Thanks. Okay. Ashley, um, in the agenda packet, um, I didn't see a copy of this, the park commission budget. I know we used to put the budget in the packet every month, but that's helpful to see how much we have budgeted for the maintenance and operations because Things like this that are general maintenance and operations, we do already have money built into the budget for that. So we don't have to make a budget amendment when it's just repairs. Um, but if it's a, like a new capital improvement, we probably need to, um, to do an exceptional item um, for that. So you should have money to fix things. Sure, and on and this budget in particular, we don't we didn't have the budget documents yet because of the way this meeting fell and the way the sales tax we have to wait for certain numbers to come in from the state. So we don't have the most updated yet. Um, I can send that out to the commission, um, or we can have it on the next month's meeting. But we're kind of playing catch up because we don't have the the numbers yet. Perfect. Thank you. 
Mary Elizabeth, you still have your hand raised. If, if you're done talking, thanks. All right. Um, so then I would like to make a motion that we add in, we update the 2021-2022 Park Commission budget and exceptional items to include, I'm pulling it up one moment, please. Uh, shoot, where did I put it? Uh, the gutter downspout and to repair the rotted wood on the field house. And then Lori will, as well as install metal edging, soil and water resistant plants at the pavilion. Okay. I don't know if we have to be that specific in the motion. Just for for discussion's sake, how much is the total amount of that? Those. Do we have a going to get the price from her gutter guy for okay. it. Okay. Okay. And that would also include painting of the field house. So of those just those the areas, areas, just those areas, correct? Or is it all the correct. painting? So yeah. it would be, it's going to, in order to, he doesn't have a color that matches the brown that's there. So then if we wanted to match the um, current roof instead, that would be double the price because it would have to be stainless. So since we just sort of piecemealed that paint job on the field house, the thought that we have discussed in previous meetings would be to repaint the columns and the fascia to a um, like a bone color off white. And that way we could save money on the gutters and also make the field house look a little more light, bright, more modern. Okay. And we're waiting. It would require repainting anyway. And, and so we just didn't think it was worth it to pay double to match a color to avoid the color issue with something we didn't like anyway. We're waiting on a, a paint palette recommendation, correct, for a future meeting? Yeah. That is correct. Okay, great. Yeah. And would someone on staff be able to paint? Or are we going to have to hire someone, Ashley? Staff can paint that. That's what I thought. Okay, great. Thank you. By the way, we love staff. <laughs> yes, we do. And a big thank you to Vicki and all those of you who worked on um, Sunday, July 4th. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so can we are past time, so I think we uh, need to get moving. Yep, agreed. So I think Nicole was making a motion. Yes. I will second it. Thank you. Okay. What was the motion again? To include, to update the 2021-2022 Park Commission budget and an exceptional item request to include the gutters, the installation of gutters and downspouts, removal and replacement of the rotted wood, as well as installation of metal edging at the pavilion uh, at the lower park. Yeah. One and two from your list. Yes, sir. Right. Thank and you. repainting all that. So, okay, great. Correct. All right, we have a motion by Nicole, second by Lori Mills. In the interest of time, once again, going to go to the raising of hands for those that are on screen and the saying of eyes. So everybody is yes. Uh, I don't see Chad. Can you give me an Chad's eye? A Chad's a yes. You. Yes, you Chad's a yes. Hand, okay, Bill. great. It's my screen and, and I'm an eye. So motion passes unanimously to add that to the exceptional items and at that we are over time so do i hear another motion i make a motion to end the meeting can i add really quickly oh, yeah. um, we do need to get these numbers to city council asap so um if i could get any backup document with numbers um as well as the exceptional item sheets uh, some of them may not end up falling into exceptional item documents if they're not you know larger purchases and they may just go in the budget but um, if we could get that by, you know, Wednesday this week, we're meeting to discuss our exceptional items on Thursday. So um, as soon as possible, numbers would be great. And I would like to recognize you, Ashley, for allowing the extra time since there initially was a five o'clock today cutoff for that. So 
thank you for once again going above and beyond and allowing extra time to try to get that in. Um, so I had a motion from Lori Mills to end the meeting. Do I hear a second? I second as long as we can add item number five onto next month's meeting that we did not discuss today. You mean item oh, number sorry. six? Number six, yes, sir. Yeah, we always, I, I think we're from now on, we're just going to push whatever doesn't get addressed to the top of the next meeting. I think we decided that last time that that will be the way things go unless people want to remove items from the agenda. So that will happen. I think that's what we agreed last time, but great. Sounds good. All right, awesome. All okay, then, so all in favor? Raise hands, say aye. Aye. All right. Unanimously, we are gone. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate it. Have a great one. Thank you. Yeah.